Hey guys, welcome back to Jess and Rage Romance. I'm Jessen and today I'm going to be doing a Christmas book haul. Now, this video has been planned for a while and I've been putting it off because I've been having such a great time reading. I was trying to get in as many books as I could before the end of 2020 and Happy New Year by the way because this video is going out on the 1st of January 2021 and so I'm so excited. I neglected filming this video for a while but it's fine because I got a few more books in that I can include for this haul so I have a lot of books to show off and I'm going to try to go as quickly as possible and there's some that I'm really excited about. The first few I want to show you are by Julia Quinn. By this time Bridgerton is out. Everybody has a lot to say about it. There's so much conversation going around the TV show and all kinds of people that are just now discovering the books. These two books by Julia Quinn I have not read before. I did not delve all the way back into her backlist. I've read quite a few others besides the Bridgertons, but I kind of fell off the Julia Quinn train once I started discovering historical romances. I discovered new authors and I never completed my read of her backlist. The first one is How to Catch an Heiress and the back is like short and sweet, just how I like my synopsis. And it says, Caroline Trent is determined to avoid marriage to her fortune hunting guardian's nitwit son, even if it means running off into the night and into the arms of the devastatingly handsome Blake Ravenscroft, the equally determined agent of the crown who mistakes her for a notorious traitor. And if, ugh, they have like the most beautiful image. I love all the purples and it's just so glorious moonlight meeting. And I cannot wait to try out this book. It's in really good condition. I just got this off of eBay in a random lot. And then we have How to Marry a Marquis. And I really like the image on the back. And if you can see, she's actually holding a mask in her hand right here. So I'm wondering if it's like a secret identity. So let's see what it says. When James Sidwell, Marquis of Riverdale, Riverdale, <laughs> offered to help Elizabeth Hotchkiss find herself a husband, he never dreamed that he could that the only candidate he could propose would be himself. So interesting. I'm wondering if they had like a previous relationship or I don't know. Maybe there is a masquerade and he like ends up by kissing her and then he's like, oh my god, I want her. I don't know. I'm speculating. I like this. I like really not having that much information about the storyline because it's more fun for me to discover it myself. So I love it. I'm really excited to try more of Julia Quinn's backlist. Then I found this really amazing copy of Elf King's Lady by Hannah Howell. Now this one's really special. Let me show it to you first because it's just really gorgeous. Love the color of her dress, everything. It's just, yes, love. And the image on the back too is really pretty as well. I'm just loving it. Um, but what's really interesting is this was rebranded and I think the current title is Highlands Captive, Captive? Highland Captive. And so this is the original cover whenever it was first published in 1990. And I was really excited to get this copy of it. The next few books I specifically got for the Historical Hellions Book Club. I'm so excited to start reading with Jessica and Samantha. They have picked some amazing books for each month. And I'm still waiting on my copy of Night Song by Beverly Jenkins. I'm not sure which cover is on this one though because it's kind of sight unseen so we'll see when I get that in. But the February pick is Love Only Once by Joanna Lindsay. I've never read a Joanna Lindsay before. I own quite a few copies now just from the amount of eBay <laughs> book lots that I have gotten and the mystery book boxes a lot of Joanna and Lindsay's were included in mine. So I'm really excited to read this in February. So let's see up close and personal. Really like all the oranges. It reminds me of like a sunset really pretty. So I'm excited about that one. I don't want to read about it. <laughs> you know me. I don't want to read about it since I'm going to read it anyway. If I know I'm going to read a book no matter what, then I'd rather go in knowing nothing because I'm weird like that. And then I got um, Once and Always by Judith McNaught. I think that this is the March pick and I really want that original cover, but I have yet to find it. So I got this copy just instead because I've been really enjoying reading the physical copies, the physical mass markets. I'm such a big ebook reader, but a lot of the historicals that I'm reading because I purchased them, it's like so much fun to have a paperback in my hand again. So I wanted the physical copy of this one for historical hellions. It seemed only right. Then I have Shanna by Kathleen Woodowis. I've not read Kathleen Woodowis yet. So this will be my first read by her. I do own the Wolf and the Dove, but I had never gotten a chance to read it. So I'm really excited to read my first Kathleen Woodowis. I know that she has been a very popular historical romance author. I am expecting some iffy consent stuff for her though, because 
think whenever I got the wolf and the dove, whatever that one was called, I people were like, oh, iffy with the consent stuff, but that's something that I expect for books that are written during this time period. So I'm just excited. This, this book is like really heavy. It's a pretty long book too. It's over 600 pages. So that'll be fun. Then I got my signed copy of the movie tie-in edition for The Duke and I. I really love this cover. I usually don't buy movie tie-in editions because I just like the original covers. And, but this one I couldn't resist because it's just so beautiful. I enjoyed the series so much. I just need to have it. And I did get um, a signed copy from the university bookstore where Julia Quinn was signing. So it is signed and I'm really excited to have this one. And I loved flopping it around. This new size, I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it. And I actually really do. So I'm here for it. Now this one is interesting. I actually got this one because this is the first book that I saw in the new mass market size. So I pre-ordered a copy and I got it in after I got The Duke and I. But that's the recover of Joanna Lindsay's Gentle Rogue. I don't have the original cover, which I am going to get. But I thought this was really interesting. I knew that the book cover looked really familiar when I first saw it and then I realized I actually own the book that has this cover and it's a Virginia Henley, <laughs> The Hawk and the Dove. And I was like, I know this cover. And I really like these books I searched for because they're one of my favorite covers and all of historical romance when I started collecting them I was on a mission to collect these Virginia Henleys because they were my favorite so I was like I knew it looked familiar and they basically just kind of recolored things so side by side the hawk and the dove and gentle rogue you can just see they changed her hair color changed the dress color deleted all kind of like ship stuff in the back but it's the same exact cover basically and I'm just wondering why they did that I do really appreciate that a recovering was meant to look like an old historical romance cover and I'm just wondering if maybe we'll see a trend in historical romances with couples on the cover to make them look more like old historicals but not recycling old I don't know how I feel about recycling the old covers I don't know if Avon got the okay to recycle this cover or whatever I didn't go try to research that or anything but I would like to see historical romances in the future lean more towards these kinds of covers. So I am excited to have it as I drop it. But um, yeah, I like more covers like this because these are my favorite. And like I love that it's all rays and it just makes it so much more luxurious. I don't know. I really like them. So then I got Her Wicked Marquess by Stacey Reed. I love My Darling Duke. It was one of my favorite ro um, historical romances that I read in 2020. So I immediately pre-ordered Her Wicked Marquess and I also read The Ark and I really loved it. This is one of my favorite covers as well in 2020. I'm really enjoying the reds. I love her dress. It's just like you got to see it up close and personal. It's just like doing everything for me. It was so good and you should definitely check out Stacey Reed if you haven't already. Then I had to get A Duchess a Day by Karis Michaels. Charis Michaels? I don't know how she says her first name, but I had to have this cover because I'm obsessed with yellow. This is one of my favorite covers of 2020 for historicals. I'm obsessed. It looks almost like magical. It looks like it has a bit of fantasy in it, but it doesn't and I'm loving it. So up close, just like all the colors that were used in this one, it just looks like such a happy cover. I just love it. Love it so much. I could stare at that cover all day. Then I decided to snatch up The Day of the Duchess by Sarah McLean. I haven't read a ton of Sarah McLean's. I've only read two or three, I want to say. Um, but this one, I think, is a lot of people's favorites. And I know that Crystal recently read this one and she really, really, really loved it. And this one does have the step back. So this is also kind of like, not new, but a newish thing to have little blurbs by other authors. So this is blurred by Lisa Kleypas on the side, like the black one. I'm not a huge fan of this. I don't know why. It just like doesn't match with the cover, but I now have a lot of books that have that. And I'm really loving the step back for this one. It's just so pretty. Summers for Scandal and Seduction. I think, is this the one with the miscarriage? Oh no, this is the one with um, Marriage and Trouble, right? Yes, 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 yes. So I'm really excited. This will this will be the next one that I read by, try by Sarah McLean. So I don't know when, but hopefully in the near future. Then I got two Lisa Kleypas with the step backs. This is worth any price. I've already read this one, but I wanted the one with the step back. And this was with Nick Gentry. I really like this one. This is the Bow Street Runner series. So I needed the one with the step back and I also got Married by Morning because I had the copy of it without the step back and I just so happened to find one on eBay. So now I have the one with the step back. 
my Lisa Kleypas collection is that much closer to being complete. <laughs> Next I found an eBay lot for The Wilds of Lindo Castle. I wanted all the books, the physical copies of the books, and I've already said that I really love this cover and so I was like of course I need this in my life. I need it in my hands. I did read the prequel novella before, well not novella. Yeah I think it was a novella because stuff was included in the back that wasn't part of the actual story of the parents of all the kids in this book, these books. So I'm really excited to start this one and all of these half step backs. Very beautiful. Really like them. Again with the blurbs on the sides. Don't know how I feel about them. Kind of don't like them but it is what it is. And I don't know if I'm showing you these in order or not but this is um, Too Wild to Wed in this step back. And then Born to be Wild, another hot shirtless hottie. Oh, I really like her dress, actually. I haven't been this too far. And then, Say Yes to the Duke. I need to get the newer one. Is the newer one out? Ooh, Thigh Flash. I see the word Vicar. Mmm. Interesting. I like these kinds of stories. The next three are books that I heard a lot of talk about in 2020 and I just didn't get a chance to read them before the year closed out. But I do want to read them early 2021 because I know that a lot of people like these books and I'm very interested and curious to see what I think. So the first one is White Out. I don't know a ton about this one. I think this one is kind of like suspense or thriller. And again, I kind of want to go in blind. I just saw it a lot and everybody was like, this was such an amazing book. So I was like, okay, that's one book that I definitely want to try. The next is The Widow of Rose House. I saw a ton of people really love this book. And I know that she is kind of notorious. For some reason, she returns to New York and she wants to renovate a mansion that I think is supposed to be haunted. And I think her love interest is like an eccentric professor or something. Again, I didn't want to read too much into it, but it sounds really interesting and I'm in the mood to try something new. And I don't read too many, I don't know if this is a suspense, suspense, but I don't read too many of like more gothic historical romances, I guess you would consider it. So I'm excited about that. Then I got the paperback copy of The House on the Cerulean Sea. I have not read this yet. And um, I had no idea that it would have kind of like this step back looking thing, but it's a fake step back. It's just, wouldn't it be amazing if they had like a couple like embracing for this, for TJ Clunes? I would have loved that, but alas, I don't have it. But this book cover is so beautiful. I just love it. It's eccentric and, and it's very whimsical and I love that. Now these next few ones are so special to me because they're the first books that I got sent off my wish list from Amazon. It's just what I needed. So Punk 57 by Penelope Douglas. I still have not read this one. I don't know why I haven't read this one. I heard so many great things about it. People who know me and know which Penelope Douglas is, I like to read are like, You're, you love Punk 57 and I just have not read it yet. So I have the physical copy. Thank you to Sylvie who sent this to me. You're amazing. And now I have the physical copy. I'm that much closer to reading it. And then I got two books from Laura. I got my favorite one from the Gianna Darling series. What is this? The Fallen series? Yeah, the Fallen series. Welcome to the Dark Side was my favorite one that I read in the series so far. I absolutely love Zeus and Lulu. They were the standout couple so far. The other books have kind of been like meh for me. I recently read After the Fall, which I will review in my December wrap up. But Inked and Lies definitely takes the cake for cover love for me. I really do like Welcome to the Dark Side, but that tattooed hand, there's something about it that just like absolutely speaks to me. You know that I'm a sucker for tattooed men. I have not read this book yet and now I have the physical copy. These books are so hefty. I didn't realize how long these books are, but they really are huge. And now I'm just gonna have to get them all in paperback. I know that they weren't like my favorite, but they have one of the most eye-catching covers that, and yeah, I just need the whole collection now. Especially now, Dead Men Walking just came out. I need them. After really loving all the taboo romances that I read from my most recent vlog, I had to get the physical copy of Untouchable, which I showed off at the end of that video. It did come in right as I was finishing that vlog and Sea of Ruin. I had to get this one as well. The cover is so beautiful and I really, really love the story. Definitely standouts from 2020, even though I didn't include Sea of Ruin on my favorite books of the year for 2020, it was. And it led me to Impulse by Dena Vipers. This was also one of the covers that I named in my 2020 cover love video. I love it. 
I didn't realize how huge it was. <laughs> But I'm really excited to start this book and I've heard a lot of things about it. I'm being real. I bought it for the cover, but yeah, yeah. I'm like in a dark romance mood. They've all been calling to me, which is also why I got Bound by Honor on the recommendation of Jen from the Book Refuge. I cannot wait to start this one. This series also has some really beautiful covers. I normally don't buy the physical copies of books that I have not read yet, but again, I was just in a mood after reading all those dark taboo ones. So I'm really into the mafia romance right now. I never thought I would say that because mafia has never been my favorite, but the ones that I've read recently, ha I've really enjoyed. So I'm just gonna follow this. Then I got the um, books that I needed to complete my collection for the Innkeeper Chronicles by Alona Andrews. The other two books my grandparents are actually sending me. It was a Christmas gift. And so they're sending that to me. But what's really cool, and I didn't even realize until I read The Innkeeper, is that within the story, there will be these images of the characters that Alona Andrews commissioned, I guess, for the series. And they're so good, and they're in the physical copies. So this is really cool. This is one of the characters. His name's Arland. He's a vampire, and ugh, oh, he's so hot. Then let's see, hold on. And this is Maud and her daughter, Helen. I just really love it. I really enjoy like open, turning the next page and being like, oh, look, it's my characters and they're exactly how I imagined them, which is crazy. And then Sweep With Me is actually a Christmas novella for this series and I really like it. So, oops, don't drop those. So I can't wait to get the other two to complete my collection. The second book is my, one of my favorite covers in the series. And then finally, these books I've already read and I already loved. I got The Revenge Pack by Isla Madden Mills. This was one of my favorite college romances that I've read in a while. Not all NA romances land with me. Sometimes the characters are very immature and I just have trouble connecting with some of the storylines in college new adult romances, but this one I really loved. Same goes with Wilder Love, has a little bit of a taboo element. I'll link that vlog that I did of all of these books so you can have some more information on them, but I really love Wilder Love. I gave it five stars. It was really good to me. And then Sweet Chaos is not a sequel to it. It's just another character that we see in Wilder Love and this is his love story. And then When the Stars Fall by the same author, Emery Rose. This is one of my favorite covers of 2020 period, hands down, I love it. He's amazing eye candy and I have to have the physical copy and I was waiting to read it until I got the physical copy of it. But just look at him. Tell me it's just not the most beautiful cover. I love it. I'm obsessed with it. It's it's unhealthy obsession, but I am. I'm obsessed with it. Okay, that completes all of the books that I bought during the month of December with my gift cards that I received and my lovely, lovely gifts from my Amazon wishlist. Thank you guys so much. That was like an unexpected surprise. I'm so happy about it. I hope everybody had a wonderful holiday and everyone had a great New Year's. I'm really excited to start all of my 2021 videos, my January TBR, all of that. I have some great books to pick from. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, make sure that you subscribe to get notified on any future videos that I do. Thank you so much for watching and remember, life's better with a little H-E-A. Bye guys. Thank you.